Multi-area OSPF, which is a way of limiting the amount of neighbors in an area, is also a design option for the OSPF. By using multi-area OSPF, we are having smaller link state database and routing tables and we are making rare SPF calculations. This design is suitable for suitable solution for large networks to decrease processing overhead. As you can see in here, we have multiple areas in here and they are area 50 and the area 60 and each area is connected to area 0 which is backbone area by an area border router. Each additional area in OSPF domain must have a connection to the OSPF backbone area as I told you and such connections are maintained by an interconnecting router known as an area border router or ABR. An ABR maintains separate link state databases for each area it serves and maintains summarized routes for all areas in the network. For example, if the link between router 8 and the router 9 is down, area border router, which is router 2 for this area, isolates the fault so just area 50 is affected from failure and makes SPF recalculation. Let's go ahead with the autonomous system boundary router, which is ASPR. An autonomous system boundary router is a router that is connected by using more than one routing protocol and that exchanged routing information with router's autonomous system. ASBRs typically also run an exterior routing protocol, for example, such as BGP or use static routes or both. An ASBR is used to distribute routes received from other external autonomous systems through its own autonomous system. And here is the OSPF LSA types. We have seven types of the OSPF LSAs. The first LSA type is the router LSA and this LSA is generated by all routers to describe directly attached links. The second LSA is the network LSA and this LSA is generated by DR to describe the neighbors connect to that segment. The second, the third and the fourth LSAs are the summary LSA and these guys are generated by ABR to describe a route to ASPR to neighbors outside the area. Type 5 LSA is the external LSA and they are generated by ASPR to describe routes to redistributed into the area. The sixth is the multicast LSA and used in multicast OSPF and this is not supported in Cisco devices. And the seventh LSA, LSA type 7 is the NSSA external LSA, not so stubby area and generated by an ASPR inside a NSSA area to describe routes redistributed in the not so stubby area. Let's go ahead with the OSPF routing table review. As you can see in here, to display the OSPF routes for the router 4, we are typing show IP routes and the OSPF command. And we have some entries in here as you can see. We have some keywords which are IA or some letters like O in here and they mean, O means for example the OSPF IA means the inter area 
and we can also see the e1 and e2 as you can see in here and these guys are the external rods redistributed into the area let's go ahead with the ospf rod summarization in an ospf design just abr and asbr rudders can summarize the routes guys ospf interiori route summarization and as i told you abrs can summarize the routes between backbone and the other areas and as you can see is an as an example in here we have two separate networks and they are 104110 and 104120 and slash 24 as you can see in here and rather 2 for example which is an ABR is representing this rod by using a single rod which is 104100 slash 22 ASBRs also can summarize in OSPF2 and ASBRs can summarize many external routes into one link state advertisement. And let's go ahead with the configuration of the multi array OSPF. To configure a multi array OSPF, guys, we are using these commands as you can see in here. For example, on router 2. To configure the OSPF, we are typing router OSPF and the process number and hitting the enter key. Then we are in the config router mode anymore. The first thing we should do is defining our router ID first. We are defining a router ID. Please pay attention that remember that as I explained you on our previous slide, this is not an IP address or something like that. We are defining our router ID. Mostly we are defining these guys similar to our router names. For router 2, we can use the 2222 mostly, but it, that is arbitrary. But in most cases, we are using like that. And then in the third step, we are defining our network statements. For example, this guy is router 2 is connected to these two networks as you can see. 1041 50 0 slash 24 and 1041-26-0-24. We have two networks as you can see in here. And we are defining these network statements. For example, network 1041.50.0 with the wildcard mask of 000.255 because of we are using a slash 24, which means 255, 255, 255.0. And if I if I convert this to the wildcard mask that's the wildcard mask of the subnet mask 000 255 and this network belonging to the area 15 area 50 I'm sorry and I'm typing the area 50 with the same logic as you can see we have another network connected to router 2 this network is in area 0 and we are typing network and the network ID 1041.26.0 and because of we are using slash 24 again the wildcard mask will be 000.255 and area will be the area 0. So let's go ahead with the multi-area OSPF version 3 configuration. To configure an OSPF version 3, we need to get into the interface mode separately and we need to activate the OSPF for each interface. For example, for Geek00, we have this network in here, 1041 
50 zero and for gig zero one we have this network in here and but we are not using these network IDs in here what we are doing just for activating the IP version 6 routing under the interfaces by using the IP version 6 OSPF the process number command and we are typing the area and the area number and that's it to configure a route summarization on an ABR guys we are, we are using the area range command for example for router 2 if I want to configure a route summarization and if I want to summarize these two guys by using a single network which is 1041.0.0.22 the command I'm using is the area range command okay I'm, I'm typing on router 2 area 50 range then I'm typing the summarized route 1041.0.0 with the subnet mask of 255.255.252.0 okay that makes the summarization for us to verify the OSPF version 2 and OSPF version 3 configuration we can use the show IP protocols, show IP route show IP route OSPF show IP OSPF neighbor interface and the database commands please keep in mind that we should use IP version 6 instead of IP to verify the OSPF version 3 configuration for example show IP version 6 route instead of show IP route